What is up, Rockers of the Rock Nation? This is your fellow rocker here, X Rockerman X, and I am back with another video for you all today. As for what the video is, well, we haven't had a WWE pay per view in about six or so weeks, and I say that roughly. And as we're having this Sunday, is one of the big four, the Royal Rumble. Hell yeah. So yeah, WWE Royal Rumble 2017 is approaching us, and I figured I'll stay here and do my predictions for it. Some of you guys may be like, what the fuck is he on about? You know, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about, you know, or yeah, I can see that happening. Well, to be fair, I really have not been paying attention to Raw lately, except for me with Jericho and all that. But in SmackDown, again, in SmackDown, it's about all I've really been paying attention to. So, I'm more prone to the SmackDown storylines over to Raw storylines. So, there's that. But ultimately, it's like, you know, whatever. Um, But yeah, starting off with the Royal Rumble, or not starting off with the Royal Rumble, because technically I end with the Royal Rumble, but starting off with the kickoff match. We got three kickoff matches this year. There might be more. There's about four hours of Mania, or not Mania, four hours of Royal Rumble. So I'm assuming the last and obviously the last hour is going to be the Rumble. So you really can't complain. And obviously it's going to be if there's more matches added to the card, there's more matches added to the card. But right now it's at eight matches, and that's usually like max cut off unless it's like seven fucking hours of WrestleMania. Then <laughs> there's probably more than that. I swear, if it's seven hours, if Mania is seven hours again this year, I swear. <sighs> oh, excuse me. But as for the first match, one of three, kick we got three kickoff matches. This is the first one, Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax. Ultimately, I could care less about this match. It's sad. I mean, I'm not, the I mean, I like Sasha Banks. But as for Nia Jax, I am not the biggest fan of Nia Jax. If, I mean, a fan of Nia Jax at all, which is probably not. Actually, more like a definitely not. I don't know. I just don't really like Nia Jax. How oh, most people seem to do. I know some, some people might be like, oh, blah, 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 whatever. But uh, honestly, again, I could care less about her. Isn't that sad in a way? But at the same time, it's not. So it's whatever. But I'm just going to have to go Sasha Banks winning. Simple as that. Sasha Banks beats Nia Jax. Boom. Raw Tag Team Championship match on the kickoff. We got Sheamus Cesaro versus Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. Two thirds of the club, the two, two thirds of the club, the Good Brothers. <clears throat> and again, this is another match I could get, I could care less about. I guess the new people would, so it's like whatever. But I apologize for like rubbing my eyes off too. I just woke up not too long ago. But yeah, the only reason I could care less about the match is just because I like Cesaro and Sheamus. I'm more of a Cesaro, I'm more of, of, of a Cesaro fan over Sheamus. But I do like Sheamus. If I said anything in the past, it's probably me just not thinking of through what I'm saying. But I like him as a tag team. It's smart, it's interesting, whatever, you know. I do like that. I, that, I was pissed off when they won the tag titles, and I'm still pissed off when they won the tag I'm still pissed off over that. But with Luke Gallows and Carl Carl Anderson, I feel like they've been Ill irrelevant. Except for when they were with AJ Styles. And they kept teasing the, the Bullet Club, and they kept teasing the club, and, you know, Finn Balor coming and joining them, even though he's faced, but it's still a possibility. And I feel like it's possible when Balor comes back off injury, they still might do the whole club theme except with Balor, but I doubt that. But, I mean, Luke Gallagher hasn't been irrelevant. I mean, they've had so many losses, they've had so many fucking shit. I don't think they just, I really don't, like, when they first came, like, oh shit, yeah, they need to get the tag belts. But not from, like, again, they're not from the New Day... You know, I still feel like Enzo Cash should have beat the New Day for the titles. But this match, I'm going to have to go with Sheamus and Cesaro. I really do. I feel like they're more, literally, I feel like lately they've been more, more appealing over Gallus and Anderson. Like, I find myself whenever they're not, they're on the screen, I don't pay attention half the time. Gallus and Anderson. I mean, I try to pay as much attention as I can, but it's just like, I, I don't, I don't know. I just can't really pay attention to them. I know it's sad, but 
granted, a lot of times when I have Raw or all on TV too, it's turned down all the way. So, but yeah, I'm just gonna go with Sheamus and Zara to win to remain the tag titles. Um, I right, on for the next. You guys hear a cat in the background? Apologies, the cat just snuck in my room. All right, there, 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 there they go. Anyway. Back to um, the kickoff match. You know, I already said James Starr is going to win and probably retain tag titles. That's probably going to happen, so there's that. Well, we got next next kickoff match. We got Becky Lynch, and Nikki Bella, and Naomi versus Alexa Bliss, Mickey and Natalia. You know, there's something you're thinking here that I really want to go with the, uh, with Alexa Bliss's team. And I say that because I, like I like Mickey James and like Natalia. Don't like Alexa Bliss. I like James and I like Natalia. So that's ultimately why I want to go with that. Because that's two to the one I like on the other team, which is Becky Lynch. And I guess Nikki Bell a little bit, but I'm not really going to complain about that. I'm more, again, I don't consider me really being a fan of Nikki Bella either. But I do. I am sure a fan of Nick, Mickey James. I am sure a fan of Natalia. So ultimately I want to go with that team. But just for the fact that Nikki Bella is on the other team... I really do feel like it's going to be Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and Naomi pick up the win here. Not saying the match is going to be bad. I feel like, I have a feeling it's going to be a good six-woman tag team match. But I'm going to have to go with big it's Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and Naomi to win. And that's just my theory. As much as they've been shitting on Becky Lynch lately, I don't think they're going to shit, her, sh shit on her as much with Nikki Bella on her team. So there's that. And it still pissed me off that they've been shitting on Becky Lynch, too. But it's whatever, I guess. <sighs> you can be pissed off about it all you want, but it's not going to change anything. As much as I would like to change it, it's not. But yeah. Becky Lynch, Nikki Bella, and Naomi win. Simple as that. Now, moving on to the main show. We have, I believe, five matches on this card. Yeah, five. So, we got the WWE Cruiserweight Championship match. Rich Swan versus Neville. Ultimately, I, I that's another match I could, I could care less about on the show. There's a lot of matches I could give, just, I could not care about. Out of the kickoff matches and probably, well, not the kickoff matches. Out of those three in this one, that's like four I could care less about right off the bat. Only because I have not been paying that much, except for Neville. It may be um, Brian Kendrick. Those are only people in the Cruiserweight division I've been paying attention to lately. Because the rest... And maybe TJ Perkins. TJ Perkins, Brian Kendrick, and Neville's only literally probably about the three people I've been paying attention to in the Cruiserweight division. The rest, I could give, give two shits about. Only because they're not giving these fuckers stories. They're not developing the characters, I feel like, for the Cruiserweight division. I know people have been bitching about that for months, but it's still true. It really is. I mean, yes, I've been trying to get better, but they're trying to give them more storylines to it, but with Neville coming into the Cruiserweight division, trying to do that, but ultimately, you know, I like Neville, whether he's heel or face, I like Neville over Rich Swan a hell of a lot better, so ultimately, I'm going to go with Neville to win and become Cruiserweight Champion, and I would, would love to see a Neville versus Brian Kendrick match. I feel like that, which probably ha ha has been in the past. I don't, I doubt it, though. I don't remember off the top of my head. Or Neville versus TJ Perkins again. Some something like that, you know. Or you know, you know, I would I mean, you know, I would love seeing Brian Kendrick to be Cruiserweight champion because fuck you, Dud B for for not letting him have the title longer. He's a hell of a lot better champion than Rich Swan. Like a thousand times percent better. Granted, probably a thousand times spent better than TJ Perkins as well. But, I regress. With this match, I still have a feeling it's going to be a good match regardless. Plenty of back and forth action, high flying, shit like that. I'm just going to go with Neville to win. Because I, I would rather have Neville over Rich Swan. So, it's Neville. Uh, moving on now. We have the four matches that I actually care about. The Raw Women's Championship... Sorry, I got paused. The Raw Women's Championship match. Charlotte Flair. And I'm only saying air quotes because... Uh, I probably talked about this at Roadblock. But yes, yeah, she is really a flair. But the reason I put air quotes isn't because of that. 
And yes, I'm building. Why are WWE. Why at Roadblock? I think actually at Roadblock, they started building your Charlotte Flair. I mean, literally at Roadblock. So it's been going like this for a few weeks now. I've been. for longer than what I think. So the point of it is why, after all this time in NXT, she was just Charlotte in the main roster since she debuted it with the Women's Revolution. She was just Charlotte. And then at Roadblock, you f you start billing her, or probably a little bit before that maybe, but I know for sure at Roadblock they started billing her Charlotte Flair. You know, even during the time she was, her dad was her manager at ringside, they didn't bill her as Charlotte Flair. They just billed her as Charlotte. That is something that's been pissing me off so fucking much. And I mean so fucking much. I don't know why that irritates me. Why they're like, oh yeah, let's just add Flair to her name, blah blah blah. No offense, I'm sorry. Charlotte Flair does not sound as good as Ric Flair. I don't know why to me. Yes, she is technically a Flair because she is Ric Flair's daughter. But the point of it is, it's just... Drop the flare part. Drop the flare part. Let her just be Charlotte. Sounds a hell of a lot better. And I like that a hell of a lot better than Charlotte Flair. Maybe that's just me. Up here might have different opinion, but whatever. But yeah, Charlotte... Charlotte... I'm gonna not even say Flair. But Charlotte... That's just her official billionaire now. But Charlotte versus Bailey. You know, I want that fucking belt off Charlotte because fuck Charlotte. I have to go with Bailey. I won't. I have to go with the hashtag hug. Oh, wait, I can't do hashtag. There it is. Hashtag. Hashtag. However you want to do it. Whatever. Hashtag hug life Bailey to win because either way, I still feel like it's going to be a good match. But I just want that belt off Charlotte, so I'm going to go with Bailey to win. So it's going to be a Bailey. Um. Yeah. The next match we have the WWE Universal Championship match, the no DQ match, with Chris Jericho suspended above the ring in a shark cage. So no Chris Jericho interference. There's probably gonna be interference, but at least no Chris Jericho interference. There might be Seth Rollins interference too. But I assume there might be Seth Rollins interference, and I say that as Chris Jericho in the shark cage, who's gonna stop Rollins from interfering? Hmm. And it's Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns. This match, ultimately, I, I feel it's going to be a good match regardless of anything that goes, anything wonky that goes down, anything that, any, no matter who interferes. God, I've been stuttering a lot lately in my videos. Sorry about that, guys. You know, beauty, great. But no. Regardless of who wins, regardless of who, who loses, regardless of how the match flow goes, regardless who interferes, regardless who doesn't interfere, I feel like it's going to be a good match all the way around. That's just me, though. But, um... You know... With the fact that Jericho is suspended in, a, suspended in a shark cage above the ring... That leaves... A clear interference line for... What's his name? Roman Reigns... Or, not Roman Reigns. Leaves a clear interference line... F an interference on behalf of Roman Reigns by Seth Rollins. That's what I'm trying to say. I just have a feeling Roman is going to win this. And I really do. Granted... With the Royal Rumble match, you know, you could have Jericho win the Rumble match. If, uh, like, if, if Kevin Owens wins, you could have Chris Jericho win the Royal Rumble match. And ultimately, you know, he faces Owens as a face. Because, you know, that could spark a heel turn there, too, for Chris Jericho. Or not heel turn. A face turn for Jericho. Stuff like that against Owens. Which, you know, it's been building up for months anyway. Ultimately, it's been that's been building up and it's been teased here and there too. So that's a possibility if Owens wins. Owens wins. Jericho might drop the belt to someone in the future, whatever the next Raw pay per view is. And then you have him win the rum, or you have him win Rumble. He drops the belt to whoever at whatever the next Raw pay per view is, and then he goes on the face Owens as a face at. WrestleMania for the universe title. That's quite possible. That's a possibility. But just the fact that he can't interfere, I do feel like Reigns is going to win this. So I have to go with Roman Reigns on this. And the reason why I'm going with Roman Reigns too is my Royal Rumble prediction, how I feel like stuff might go down. 
which is also going to be one of the, which I'll get more on that later. But yeah, Roman Reigns to win the Universal Championship. Simple as that. Moving on, we have W Championship match, AJ Styles versus John Cena. And another one of those matches. No matter who wins, no matter who loses, it's going to be a fun match. It's going to be a hell of a match. It's going to be a great match all the way around. Regardless of who wins this. Regardless who interferes on whose behalf, which definitely won't happen. Regardless of what fuckery might go down, which again may or may not happen, and maybe Better Man wins here. It may be one of, actually one of those who may the best man win things. So yeah. But as much as I like AJ Styles, just because of what I think is going to go down in the Rumble match, what I think is going to go down at WrestleMania, what I think might be the, the, the match at Mania... I have to go with John Cena to win and tie Ric Flair's record at 16 times. Granted, I believe any time I say Cena's in a title match, I say he's going to win, which you, you you expect it by now, no matter what. You just seem to expect him winning no matter what in a title match. Even if he's lost so many title matches in the past, even if he's lost so many matches in non-title matches in the past, you just expect him to win the title match and tie Ric Flair's record. It's inevitable. Eventually, I feel like it's going to happen. He, John Cena is the Ric Flair of, this feels going to be pissed when I say that too, but is the Ric Flair of this era. I mean, there's so many people I could say that, but it's probably true. You know, as much as I don't want to say that, but you know, he's probably eventually going to tie Ric Flair's record before he retires. And if he beats it, that'd be another thing under his belt, but I feel like they're at least going to have him tie it. If he never beats it, he never beats it. But eventually, he's going to tie it. And that's just my theory on that. And just because of who I think is going to win the Rumble match, I feel like he's has he just has to win. I really do. So, I have to go with John Cena to win the WWE Championship. It's simple as that. Now, moving on, we got the main event match. The match is going to be over an hour long, over an hour long, maybe shy short of an hour. But it's definitely probably going to be an hour or more. We got the main event match, the Royal Rumble match. And this is the Royal Rumble this year. This match this year is unpredictable as hell. You got Undertaker in it. You have, well, people are going to say it's probably the most unpredictable match in recent years. And while I do agree with some unpredictability, it's still going to uh, some unpredictability, uh, some unpredictability. There's definitely going to be a lot of predictability still in it. Regardless of what's going to happen, regardless of what you think, regardless of what we know, you, you'll look back on it and be like, oh yeah, I understand why that happened, that kind of was predictable. But in the moment, you might not think that, but looking back, you will think it's predictable. Uh, like, I mean, because we got Goldberg, we got Brock, we got Undertaker, you know, Dean Ambrose, um, Miz. Obviously, a lot of the surprises that might happen in the Rumble match. And stuff like that. And that's kind of why I like people like to my suits. Surprise entries. But, um... You obviously know Brock's going to fuck over Goldberg. And that's my opinion on that. After the defeat at fucking... What was it? Uh, Survivor Series? Yeah, Survivor Series. You know Brock's probably going to fuck over Goldberg. Or it's going to lead, in, it lead to a double elimination. Brock and Goldberg eliminate each other or something. It's going to end up in a match at WrestleMania... You know, that's just me there on that theory. You know, along with everyone else in the ring, you know, the Wise are going to be in it. Dean Dean's going to be in it. You know, Dean could win, but he's Intercontinental Champion. So it's going to be him versus Miz again eventually, probably, I feel like. You know, Dolph Ziggler could win it now that he's heel. You know, that's just opinion thing. You know, Bray Wyatt could finally win one, and I would like that, honestly. But... The reason, but the reason why I picked John Cena to win the WWE Championship against AJ Styles is because the man that I feel like, and this is my prediction, and a lot of people are probably thinking it too, but the man who I want to win, or not, I wouldn't say want to win. Yeah, I do want him to win because I feel like he does need at least one more last Rumble win and one more last huge WrestleMania moment. <laughs> it's going to be the Undertaker winning. That's why I had John Cena win the fucking WWE Championship because Undertaker's probably going to go. Win the Rumble, if they do make him win the Rumble. But he's probably going to win the Rumble. Come out. You know, win the Rumble. Um, 
Oh, he's going to start, he's, since he's always been more of a SmackDown guy, even though he showed up on Raw the past few times, that that's been more to hype the Rumble more than anything. You know, since he's always been more of a SmackDown guy, Undertaker has, you know, he's going to go after the WWE Championship. It sets up him versus John Cena, a match that hasn't happened over 12 years. It only happened once. And it would be nice for it to happen again. I really wouldn't mind seeing it happening. Some of you might be like, oh, no, it shouldn't. No. I would actually wouldn't mind seeing this match happen again. You know, the match happens at WrestleMania. All this build-up to the match happens at WrestleMania. Undertaker wins. The WWE Championship retires with the belt. As much as some people might believe that he could be at WrestleMania 34. Or no, it's 33, yeah. So WrestleMania 34. He could be there as well. But... I feel like if he's going to retire anytime soonish, now would be the great time to do it because they're in technically his home state. Or not, it's the Rumble. Never mind. The Rumble's in Texas. I feel dumb now for saying that. The, the, the WrestleMania is in Florida. Never mind. I feel dumb. Sorry. I forgot that for a moment. For some, I was thinking, I've seen, for some reason, I've seen it as the opposite. I don't know why. I've seen it was the opposite for some reason. Rumble and Rumble in Florida and WrestleMania in Texas. Whatever. The point of it is, I just feel like now be if Undertaker's going to retire right now, would be a great time for him to retire, if he ever will. Which I would hate for him to retire. Like he's been always been one of my all time favorite wrestlers, one of my all time favorite guys. But with John Cena going for the W Championship, I feel like it'd be great if Under. Which granted, I still say the Chris Jericho thing could be plausible if Owens wins, but. I just feel like, you know, Undertaker's going to I feel I have that feeling that Undertaker's going to win the Rumble. Granted, it may not happen. It might just be me. But if Undertaker wins the Rumble, he will challenge Cena. That's how I see it's going to happen. People have been talking about this match forever happening. So, my pick's for Undertaker to win. So, there's that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this prediction video. I know it's a lot longer than what it should have been because I kept rambling on about stuff. But, um... Yeah, let me know your picks down below. Let me know who you think is going to win the, one of the most unpredictable Rumbles in recent years. You know, let me know if you think it's going to be Undertaker. Let me know if you actually going to think Goldberg. Let me know if you actually think Brock's going to win. Let me know who, who and I really want to hear your opinion on why and your theory on why they're going to win, too, of who's going to win the Rumble. I really do want to hear that. So let me know in the comments below if you guys want to. Um, yeah, until next time, guys, live free and rock.